Live from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is NASA Shuttle Operations, where we're standing by for the arrival of the NASA Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, designated NASA 905. The SCA, as it's known, is en route to Kennedy from Dryden Flight Research Center in California today. It's a modified 747 jetliner, modified to be able to carry a space shuttle on top, and it's been utilized over many years for this function. This, however, will be its final ferry flight as it arrives at Kennedy Space Center for the last time and is prepared to ferry Space Shuttle Endeavor from Florida to the California Science Center via Los Angeles International Airport in California. Currently, we're expecting landing at about 5.05 .05 p.m. Eastern Time. The shuttle carrier aircraft will be landing on Kennedy's shuttle landing facility runway 15, which is the northwest to southeast runway. Beautiful weather conditions here in Florida. Despite a uh, front moving through over the last several days, bringing afternoon thunder showers, today the weather has cooperated. We have an entirely new weather pattern. Uh, hopefully portending good weather for the entire ferry operation uh, and the operations to attach Space Shuttle Endeavor to the shuttle carrier aircraft. Once it arrives, the shuttle carrier aircraft will be prepared for this operation. Its pilots will uh, undergo uh, weather briefings and work with the team here at Kennedy Space Center to prepare the aircraft as well as Space Shuttle Endeavor. The shuttle carrier aircraft is commanded by veteran NASA pilot Jeff Moultrie, and his pilot flying with him is Bill Rickey. It's an entirely veteran crew of NASA pilots who have been with uh, NASA for many years, training astronauts and flying a whole series of aircraft, including these shuttle carrier aircraft. Also aboard the plane today are three flight engineers, Henry Taylor, Gary Ash, and Larry LaRose. They'll set the aircraft down and taxi over to the mate demate device, which is located here at the shuttle landing facility. The mate demate device is a special operation that uh, was put in place here at Kennedy Space Center and also at uh, the Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California. You can see it here in this picture. It enables the large 747 to move underneath it, uh, which it will do on Friday. Now what's going to happen after the shuttle carrier aircraft lands today and a whole series of operations begin on Friday morning at 5, Space Shuttle Endeavor will be rolled out of the Vehicle Assembly Building here at Kennedy Space Center. And over the course of about an hour, it will be brought to this location at the mate de mate device. There's a yellow sling that you can see in this picture that will be affixed to the orbiter, to the Space Shuttle Endeavor. And then the crane will lift Endeavor up into the air to a height that uh, will enable it to fit uh, underneath or above actually the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft which will taxi in underneath it and over the course of uh, the day on Friday with the operation expected to be completed by 5 or 6 p.m. we expect that uh, the space shuttle Endeavour will be soft mated to the top of the shuttle carrier aircraft and then on Saturday some finishing touches will be performed to hard mate it on Sunday, the shuttle carrier aircraft with Endeavour on top will back out of the mate de mate device and then be readied for the ferry flight to California, which will begin at sunrise on Monday morning, September 17th.
Back in April of this year, Space Shuttle Discovery was uh, prepared for its final ferry flight. It flew to Dulles Airport in Washington, uh, and it was put atop NASA 905, the same shuttle aircraft, uh, sh shuttle carrier aircraft, and you can see the mating operation in this time-lapse video that we're looking at with a yellow sling going over top of Discovery. Uh, the workers busily preparing it. And now you can see that uh, Discovery is lifted. There are four attach points for the yellow sling. The wheels are uh, retracted. Landing gear is up. And Discovery is lifted into the air. Now the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft is brought into position, carefully lined up. It needs to match up with three attach points, one in the uh, front and two in the rear, the same attach points that attached the space shuttles to the external tanks when they flew into space. A soft mate will be achieved and the sling removed. And then the, uh, the work team will complete the operation of hard mating the space shuttle. Again, this is Space Shuttle Discovery. This was performed prior to Discovery's April 17th ferry flight to Washington, D.C. And now we see NASA 905, the shuttle carrier aircraft, as it makes its approach to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it will land this afternoon on Shuttle Landing Facility Runway 15. Once again, Jeff Moultrie is at the command. Bill Rickey is uh, in the right seat. And three flight engineers are all keeping an eye on systems. It's a heavily modified Boeing 747 with unusual handling characteristics. It uh, takes a lot of experience to fly, especially when a shuttle is mounted on top. This is the same team, predominantly, that ferried Space Shuttle Discovery to Washington and Space Shuttle Enterprise to JFK Airport in New York, also in April of this year. NASA 905 took off from Edwards Air Force Base at 8.30 Pacific time today and has made a direct flight here to Kennedy Space Center. The shuttle carrier aircraft has the three struts with the associated interior structural strengthening to uh, help facilitate carrying a shuttle on its back. It also has two additional vertical stabilizers from a normal 747, one on each end of the standard horizontal stabilizer, and this helps with stability. All the seats and interior furnishings have been removed. And it's an amazing aircraft. Landing gear are down as the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft makes a sweeping turn over the space coast of Florida. Again, it's approaching from the northwest to the southeast and will land on runway 15 at the shuttle landing facility. NASA 905 is on final approach to the shuttle landing facility in preparation for NASA's final ferry flight of a space shuttle program.
We're looking at a view from a camera mounted on the vehicle assembly building. And now we see uh, a view from the runway looking to the southeast. And we have touchdown. Shuttle carrier aircraft returning to Kennedy Space Center for one final time. It will uh, perform this ferry flight across the country back to California and will then be flown to the Dryden Flight Research Center and retired. It will become a part of NASA's SOFIA program, no longer required for the space shuttle program. You can see the struts mounted on top of the shuttle carrier aircraft uh, to which Space Shuttle Endeavour will be affixed on Friday. The ferry flight will be uh, performed in several legs, whereas Space Shuttle Discovery flew directly to Washington, D.C., and Space Shuttle Enterprise directly from Washington to New York. NASA intends to uh, deliver Space Shuttle Endeavour to the California Science Center, which actually owns Endeavour and uh, has some say in the matter, and intends to have a welcome ceremony at Los Angeles International Airport on September 20th. Keeping that in mind, the NASA managers have determined that the ferry flight will begin, weather permitting, on the morning of uh, Monday, September 17th at sunrise. This shuttle carrier aircraft with Endeavour atop will take off here from the shuttle landing facility and make a flyover of the Space Coast flying over Kennedy Space Center and the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex and the nearby Cape Canaveral Air Force Station as well as Patrick Air Force Base and additional areas of the Space Coast to uh, show off the shuttle carrier aircraft and Space Shuttle Endeavour one last time for the workforce and residents here of the Space Coast before flying back over the shuttle landing facility and waving goodbye and then heading off to the west. That flyover of the Florida area as well as some additional flyovers on the ferry flight will all be performed at an altitude of about 1,500 feet. It's a spectacular sight to see this large 747 with a space shuttle weighing 175,000 pounds itself mounted to the top. After departing the Kennedy Space Center area, the shuttle carrier aircraft will fly to the west and makes low flyovers of the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi, NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans, and then it will head to Houston where it will uh, conduct a flyover of the Johnson Space Center and some other areas in the Houston area and land at Ellington Field on the afternoon of September 17th. It will remain there until the morning of September 19th, with the 18th being a weather contingency day just in case. And it will depart Houston, take off for El Paso, Texas, refuel at Biggs Army Airfield, and then take off for Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California.